Our crew recently rode with Trooper David Chavez. He patrols District 8, which covers much of Pima County. Across the state, there are 27,000 highway miles. The majority of the stuff that we do with Highway Patrol is uh, collisions and traffic. So we stop people for uh, hazardous violations, equipment violations, and uh, correct their driving behavior. Chavez has been on patrol for six years. He's one of more than 1,100 troopers. If you've ever watched ants walking in a line and then you see one ant doing something weird, that's kind of what, what catches my attention. Majority of people are going to be driving regular, little speeding, maybe not so speeding. A unit for report of a wrong way, a white pickup, elderly male driver. Our day covered areas along Interstate 10, both east and westbound. His focus is on criminal activity. The vast majority of people are, are regular people. And then probably like 4% of people are some sort of habitual offender, driving super suspended, revoked, canceled, uh, maybe have like minor warrants, uh, misdemeanor warrants. And then the 1% that I'm actively always looking for are like the felons, the ones that have felony warrants, the ones that just murdered somebody, the ones that just kidnapped somebody, domestic violence person on the run because they beat up their, their loved one, uh, the people with child pornography, child molesters that are on the run, yeah, I'm actively looking for all the super, super bad guys all the time. But the vast majority I come across are regular people. Within minutes, Chavez makes his first stop. So he's yielding. So he might have just trying to, been trying to make his exit quickly. The next stop is westbound through a construction zone. So this gentleman, he was uh, traveling approximately 62 miles per hour in the number one lane in the construction zone where it's posted 55. 55, I had my, my thing set. I was, I was going 55, you passed by me. That was like you said, construction ended. When, when, when you get past the sign, that's when it, when it changes, not okay. before. The stop becomes more complicated. How much weed do you have in the car? A um, little bit smokable. When was the last time you smoked? That's mine. I understand the DUI laws. The driver has a medical marijuana card. Trooper Chavez says fresh and smoked marijuana don't smell the same. In this case, the story and behavior which Chavez is trained to identify is legitimate and the driver can continue on the roadway. Do you have any questions for me? No, not at all. all right. I really appreciate you. God bless you. You be all right. safe out here, right? Thanks, you too. Arizona has a medical marijuana program. It began in 2011. 10 years later, recreational use became legal. Chavez says in about a third of his stops, the vehicle contains marijuana and their driving behavior varied, but they were all impaired by weed. With, uh, with the new marijuana laws, they still can't drive impaired. They can't smoke and drive, they can't drink and drive. They need to drive safely. Uh, they need to think about themselves in the way where they want to take care of themselves and take care of other people, not just think of uh, their priorities because their driving behavior affects other drivers. In 2019, DPS made 17,000 arrests. Nearly 5,500 were DUIs, and some 3,700 were drug-related. Though traffic dipped slightly, likely due to the pandemic, Chavez notices activity is returning to normal. There is significantly more traffic on the road. Uh, during that high part of quarantine, I could be st sitting over here on, like off of I-10, and I would be able to like individually count the cars that were coming by me every like five minutes. Aside from citations or giving warnings, his baseline is public safety, which we watched firsthand. Be out with debris, westbound 234, tire debris, number one and two lane. All right, so we're gonna have to wait for a natural break. Yeah, real life Frogger is not fun. Back to dealing with drivers, the stops vary from friendly. So you gotta take that one down. So I'm just gonna cut you a warning on it, but yeah, make sure you don't have anything in front of you that's gonna impede your ability to clearly see out your windshield. So they, they don't want, and that thing's huge, dude. That's like the biggest air freshener I've seen all day. Cause the Mexican guy went a lot. Is it? Yeah. Um, is it smell good? What's it smell like? It's empanada. Is it empanada? Yeah. Nice. To somewhat aggressive. You can't just hang out in the in the in the number one lane. You gotta either drive faster or you gotta move over to the right. But yeah, just pulled you over because you're repeating all that traffic. So you're just getting warnings. Were you worried about getting a ticket? Yeah, I already oh. know I already know how you guys function. Zero two seven eight one uh, zebra one. 
Later in the day, the wind plays a factor. Um, are you having trouble with the wind or what's going on? Because yeah, you haven't maintained your lane a couple, like four times now. No, I mean, it's just the wind, man. Every stop Chavez made revealed some sort of violation. Yeah, you have like a limited extradition warrant. Though DPS has seen a consistent flow of border related crimes. If they are smuggling, there's probably more than one vehicle. They probably have distractions that might be coming up on it too to protect the, their, their load or whatever. So grossly outnumbered out here. On this day, there's a small amount of drugs on a suspected Texas. impaired driver. King, with three copy rolling to it out of Nevada. Eastbound 10, 236. When he got near us, he pulled up alongside and then he, he, he went at a higher rate of speed and got ahead. And as soon as the, the window went down, I could start smelling odor of alcohol coming out of the vehicle. And then he lowered the, all the windows. So it kind of blew the, the odor away. Um, but I looked down and there's like a beer can like in front of me as on the passenger seat. And I could hear in his voice that he had the slur, slurred speech. And then later on when I asked him to remove his eyeglasses, uh, his eyes are like bloodshot and watering, which are other indicators of possible impairment. So I have slurred speech, odor of alcohol, and uh, bloodshot watery eyes. So three, three different reasons to ask him to be consent to tests and he consented to the field sobriety tests. Between I-10 and an off-ramp, Chavez conducts a field sobriety test, which he says the driver failed. It's just a breath test. So just take a deep breath, go into the tube until I tell you to stop, right? So I was been told, sir, to be honest, to refuse the, when it comes to the breathalyzer. You don't want to do the breathalyzer? Yeah, I've been told, you know what? You were 10-1, I copied something blocked yeah. on the right. What's up to you, yes or no? I, what would happen if you said no? Well, you told me you hadn't drank it all, right? No. Okay. Did I do well on the test, or? <sighs> I can smell it on you so hard right now, dude. Really? And your eyes are bad. I got to arrest you, right? Are you serious? Yeah, I got to arrest you. See indicators of impairment on multiple tests. Oh, really? Which one? While searching the vehicle, Chavez finds marijuana. The driver's charged and taken back to the station where a judge issues a warrant for a blood test. In this room, Chavez also serves as a phlebotomist. Suspicion of DUI can take a trooper off the roadway for more than 60 minutes at a time. State police average more than 420,000 stops a year. At least one stop during every hour of his shift, Chavez asked drivers for patience. Uh, they should remember the mover law for Arizona. If they break down and they have their hazard lights on, um, vehicles are supposed to move over or slow down if they're unable to move over. And then same thing with the emergency lights. If the emergency lights are on, they're supposed to move over, give a lane in between, move over or slow down if they're unable to. For this trooper, a day without a collision or a fatality is a good one.